Hi everybody, it's Al again, and I wanted to do a quick video on Harbor Freight Panel. Should you or shouldn't you purchase them? So those are my uh, my main panels. Uh, this set here of eight uh, is a 1.6 kilowatt array. That over there is a two kilowatt array. And those guys over there, uh, there's about 64 of those uh, Harbor Freight Panels, and those are about a kilowatt, a little bit over a kilowatt. Um, those are very expensive. Those are way inexpensive. Those guys there were a dollar a watt. These guys here were about 250 a watt uh, when I bought them back in 2009. And prices have gone down tremendously since then. So uh, why, uh, why am I telling you this? And why did I buy hard freight panels? So I get a lot of people, uh, you know, commenting that they're a waste of money and you know you can get cheaper panels and I get all that. My first panels that I ever put in my home were those sh sharp panels at 1.6 kilowatts. Then I bought a few Harbor Freight panels. I think I bought a dozen of them. And then I bought my two kilowatt array. And after I had that done, I came back over here and I added more of the Harbor Freight panels and I spent quite a bit of money on those. Uh, but why would I do it? Well, let's think about survivability, right? I can take, uh, or I can think of any number of disasters that could kill my large arrays. If I had hail big enough, uh, I could count on a number of my panels going south. And let's take a look at the first array, right? That's 1.6 kilowatts, and there are eight panels in that. If I lose one panel, I lost one eighth of my power. If I lose two panels, I lost a quarter of my power. On the other ones here, every panel that gets broken over there is 100 watts down the drain. And there's 20 of those. So it's one twentieth of power, then one tenth of power if another one fails, and so on. If you have an EMP event, solar panels are pretty sturdy. I don't think that you're gonna, you're gonna suffer anything from an EMP event. Uh, with the solar panels getting damaged, the the best or the worst thing that'll happen is that the diodes in them are gonna are gonna bust, and we, you really don't need them because all you need is one good diode along the line, right before it gets to the batteries, and you're good. So why would I purchase those Harbor Freight panels? Well, I did because if I br if I break one of those panels, I lose 15 watts, and only 15 watts. If I need to bug out, and I need to take something with me, those things are small enough that I can take maybe 10 or a dozen of them, unbolt them, put it in the truck, put a charge controller, bring the charge controller with me and an inverter, uh, and, uh, and even just running off the car battery, because those are 12 volts, and they're made for 12 volts, uh, I could be up and running. I could take just a couple batteries with me of my 12 volts, and I'm good to go. So there are reasons why I purchased them, and these reasons are not reasons that you should use to purchase Harbor Freight panels. Um, if you have not yet had uh, or installed a significant number of panels that will meet your need, whatever that need is. If you have a need for one kilowatt an hour, then do so. If you have a need for just a couple hundred you know, watt uh, worth of panel, then do so. Uh, but these guys are really made for, for the survivability. They're not for power production, they're for survivability. And they, they augment my power production by a little bit over a kilowatt uh, an hour. So, you know, that's nothing to sneer at. A kilowatt an hour in an eight hour day, you said kilowatts of power. So that's, that's not bad at all. Uh, and so it's something for you to think about. Um, you know, people that are, you know, constantly emailing me, you know, about why did I do this? And, or some people actually will email and say, hey, that's a great idea, I should go get some. Uh, my answer would be don't don't go out and get some. Don't buy Harbor Freight panels and spend the money unnecessarily uh, unless you first invest in some other panels. And if you have the means and the need to have sur to want survivability and be able to carry something with you, then those are a great uh, addition to take. Those are something great to do. If you live in a place where you're very susceptible to hail, uh, you know you're gonna pay more for those but you're going to break less panels. Well, you're going to lose uh, less power from panel failures or panel breaks. Uh, these panels are just as good 
and will last just as long as any one of my other panels. These panels over here uh, on the sharp panels, they are polycrystalline panels. The other one are thin film amorphous panels, which is exactly the same thing. Those are, uh, those are made by DuPont. These guys are also thin film amorphous panels, right? Uh, they are just as good as each other. They will last, uh, they're guaranteed to last um, or, or to generate 85% of, of the rate of power in 20 years. These guys will do the same thing. You've seen these things on the roads for years and years and years, powering uh, rural uh, traffic lights and stop signs and warning signs and those kind of things. So those things have been around for many years. Uh, the thin foam is a new technology, but amorphous is not. So uh, just as a word that just because, you know, they say Harbor Freight, they're junk, they're not. They're, they're very good panels, very good quality panels. But I tell you, I'll tell you right now that you will overpay on a price per watt because the smaller the wattage rating of the panel, the more the cost per watt is to fabricate that panel. It's much cheaper to lay out a big old sheet of, of uh, thin film and one sheet of glass and one aluminum frame and the gaskets for that or maybe the polycrystalline uh, to fabricate a, a large piece than it is a whole bunch of little ones. So. Uh, anyways, that's my food for thought for you guys. Take it or leave it. Uh, but hopefully that'll clear up. You know, why do I have Harbor Freight panels? And no, I did not start with Harbor Freight panels. I started with sharp panels, added, added about a dozen Harbor Freight panels, moved to my sharp panels or my uh, DuPont panels, put those online, and then I added back to back to here. And these reasons are only for survivability. So uh, I hope everybody takes that to heart, think about it. Uh, survivability is a big part of uh, my design and my planning and everything we do. So you can see uh, back here, we have a greenhouse. We have fruit trees everywhere, all around our property are fruit, fruit trees actually. And uh, we have goats that you can see. Uh, somewhere else, you'll find that we have geese they're not around and ducks and we have guineas so we have a, a totally self-sustaining place uh, that we could not just live into and, and survive but we could thrive here and we have all the all the equipment that we need to totally be self be self-sufficient when you come over here and look at our plants right some are the de decorative plants some are not here we got peppers here we have some banana trees. Uh, there's some oranges here, as you can see, right? Uh, there's some lemons right there. There are some papayas up there. More peppers here. I guess you'd know by now that I do like peppers. Huh? And we have additional fruit trees back here. We have figs. Uh, we have all kinds of stuff. We have uh, oranges, we have grapefruit, uh, we have um, um, plums, we have pears, we have apples, uh, we have all kinds of stuff. And this is uh, this one here is actually a kind of a unique one for most people here. This is a guava uh, plant right here. And when we put it in the uh, um, in the greenhouse, uh, this thing will thrive throughout the winter and uh, will actually give us some great tasting guavas. And if we're looking here, uh, there are some guavas already developing here. So uh, we have everything that we need and the key to uh, our process is survivability, right? Make sure that you're self-sufficient. Get your fruit trees in place, get your garden going. If, if you don't know how, uh, you know, we we had a garden plowed, uh, but it's such a pain to keep the weeds out of it. Uh, we'd rather um, do it in, in uh, 55 gallon drums that are cutting half, uh, and they're much easier to deal that way. Uh, and then uh, going back to the topic, which I got off the topic, obviously, of the uh, Harbor Freight panels is don't go and invest money on Harbor Freight panels unless you have everything else taken care of and you need something that you can take on the road or you need something that's small that you could put away. So for example, I may take a number of those panels down and put those in steel containers 
in just so I can protect myself from EMP failure, just like I'm going to do with uh, my standby backup uh, modified sine wave inverter. I'm going to take that guy and I'm going to put it in an EMP uh, protected uh, place. I don't need to take care of that one because that one doesn't have anything that can fry in an EMP event. Um, but certainly I may get another one of these guys here and stick it in the box or get one that is cheaper and stick it in the box uh, and I'll also have a charge controller. The batteries I won't have to worry about. So my next step in my planning is how do I protect myself from an EMP event, right? And uh, be able to do that uh, to survive properly. This is another inverter that's a four kilowatt inverter right here, the CE4000. As you can see it's turned off. And right now it's not even wired. It's on wire right now. You can see the wires down there because I already tested it. That guy is getting ready to be put in, uh, in an EMP uh, metal container uh, just so I can have survivability. And if you know, my pure sound wave inverter over here ever fails, uh, I don't care. I have this guy right here. And that guy will make all the power that I need. It's four kilowatts, just like that other one is. So anyways, I hope you find that useful. God bless everybody. Thanks for watching.